Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, uh, November 12th, 2019. In this video, we're going to cover the precious metals. Um, starting out here, you see a chart of NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures, because uh, to me, it's all related. Um, you know, it's been a risk on, risk off market. I've seen one of the most distinct and uh, pretty abrupt uh reversals in in market sentiment overall in just the last couple of weeks you know after the fed cut which was expected we had a flurry of uh, uh you know not a flurry i'm so just a few uh economic indicators that came in better than expected and i can't recall such a uh, you know a, a clear and distinct shift in sentiment from things i've read uh you know uh, you know a lot of market you know pundits being interviewed just saying we're in an all clear environment you know stocks are going to go up for the foreseeable future you buy everything be long and look hey maybe they're right but it's it's a little dangerous to see such a you know uh if you know again if i you know from what i'm reading and understanding and you can see it in the bullish sentiment surveys and all that the extremes but uh where i'm going to go with that is you know it's all interrelated as long as the stock market does rally then uh, it's going to be hard for gold and, pres and, and silver and other precious metals to uh, to catch a bid or you know do anything more than grind around in the trading range they've been in. Now, with that being said, I think it's it it speaks to the resiliency of gold and and silver, which are clearly still in a bull market. Make no mistake about it. By you can say what you want where you think it's going, but just like the stock market which is clearly in an overall bull market as well. That's what gold's been in. Gold bottom back in uh, December of, uh, what was it, 2016, 2015? Why am I drawing a blank on 2015, yes, December 2015, because I, I remember yeah, 2016 was the beginning, you know, the start, really, of the bull market. All right. All right, so let's. what I wanted to get at is here's that uh, trend line. Remember, uh, an update today, I added this uh, trend line here that I hadn't had on there before, and it comes back to we have a reaction low candlestick body right there. So a lot of reactions, and we're on it right now. That's what I wanted to update. And, uh, you know, these divergences continue to build. So uh, as far as the near-term outlook, should this break down and trigger a sell signal? Again, things I've gone over already uh, quite a bit recently. You know, it's the same old, same old. A lot of, uh, you, know, I, you know, other than this trend line added, I'm saying we need to break that. Then break 8200 is a pretty big level right there, 8200 support. And if so, uh, I gave you my price targets here down to about 80, 40, 50, that target zone. And quite possible, and I'm starting to lean towards uh, 79, 78. Uh, so we'll just say uh, this is still my preferred swing target zone, and I'm very, very open to that. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So... Watch that. If this starts to pan out, then uh, you should, uh, you know, uh, you might want to jump into gold, silver, uh, because I'll probably catch a reinflation trade. You know, they've 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 been getting sold relentlessly. They've been knocked down quite a bit, so you probably see some um, both, you know, bargain hunters stepping in as well as the uh, flight to safety bit. So that's that on the markets, and. Um, even if you don't trade NQ or the stock market, you trade gold, you want to watch that, in my opinion. All right, let's look at the charts. We're going to start with the future. You know, I'll start with the ETFs. I know a lot of you guys trade ETFs, uh, a lot of guys and gals out there. I say guys, you know, g generically speaking. Um, and I could play around with the upper trend line. It doesn't really fit well. Let's just pull that off. You know, there's the bottom line in gold on the daily chart. We clearly had overbought conditions and clear negative divergence, buying climax. You see these volume surge here uh, on the thing. So it was it, just a little much, too much, too fast. And again, gold has been consolidating now uh, for the last several months. And it is dropped towards the, you know, out or at least the lower end of that consolidation range, consolidation range, excuse me. But on support, you can see 136.58 is support. You have a reaction, a couple reactions there, and then a gap up. So you have gaps and three separate uh, reaction highs right there. So you have gold at support, not quite oversold, uh, at least not on the, uh, you know, to the 30 level on the RSI, but getting close. Not a lot in the indicators that say this is, you know, step in for the next leg up. Now, it could happen. You don't always get, as you guys know, I like to see these, you know, divergent highs and lows to set up the next swing trading up. There was a divergent high correction. It ended in, you got it right here. There's your di positive divergent, divergent low, rally. 
That ended with a divergent high correction. Uh, positive doesn't say it here, but that should say DL right here, that, or right there. That was a divergent low. Here's your positive divergence rally. All right, so pretty simple stuff, right? Uh, my convictions on gold would be a lot higher for, uh, you know, an entry here uh, or even here. And maybe we'll get it at the time for the next leg up if we had a divergent low. Um, but we don't. But again, that is not a absolutely uh, must. Uh, it's just something that helps to confirm a trade. So therefore, my convictions aren't very strong in gold. So I'll maintain the, I'll continue to say the same thing. If you are longer term bullish, you take a look at the weekly chart. And again, there's that bottom in 2015, uh, December 2015. And gold has been, uh, strip all these lines and annotations away. And uh, you can see it's clearly moved higher since then. Uh, walking its way up. And uh, so it's in uh, up quite a bit. It's in a bull trend since that point in time. Now, uh, like all bull trends, you can see back here is the last bull market in gold. Let's strip away these lines again. Uh, nothing goes straight up forever. So along the way in a bull trend, you're going to have corrections. And some are bigger than others. And they usually, you know, especially when you get overbought, you have corrections. And then uh, at some point the uh, trend ends and then you begin the next trend, which of course in itself has corrections from you know bear market rallies so the the million dollar question is is this over yet uh, hey is it the end of the bull market well uh, anything's possible I can't tell you with the highest degree of you know or any degree of certainty uh, but uh, based on the charts I don't think it is so to me it's more a matter of you know does gold reverse here soon is that support now or does it come on down here maybe uh, as low as this level anything much more than that it's not going to look good it's going to really muddle up the uh, longer term technical picture so that would be about 130 as I had a big level before so we'll call it yeah 130 it'd be my max pullback target it's only uh, seven and a half points uh, below on a you know $137 security on GLD so uh, we'll see if and when it gets there. And so far, the drop, just to kind of measure it out from high to low, is spanned about 2.1 months and about seven and a quarter percent. You know, go back here, and you see corrections. There's an eight percent or so correction. There's a six percent correction. Here's a bigger one. This one was uh, one of the big ones in there, um, midpoint of the bull market, and that was about almost a 12 percent drop, about 2.4 months. So again, right now. We can't look at this and say it's anything more than just a correction within an ongoing bull market. This is a different bull market. This one's a lot like the stock market bull market. It's not as you know straight up. It's more of a kind of a slower grind, uh, higher uh, than uh, you know this bull market back here. That was a big, big, you know, pretty steady and, and strong advance there. Okay, so levels to watch on gold and how to trade it. I can't give a uh, high convictions. You know, on a on a hard entry, what I call a hard entry, but I can say a soft entry for those longer term bullish want to scale in. You know, I've been saying scale in here, buy some here, buy here, down to that level. And again, I don't want to see it go below 130. Or you can wait for evidence of reversal, uh, some something in the charts. I just don't see it now. It can come in many forms. Uh, you know, uh, so we'll we'll see what happens there. And uh, as far as a weekly chart goes, again, you can kind of box it in here. Uh, there it is. There's that line I had. Remember, I showed you in the last update here. This is where we really started this three month sideways trading range right here. Uh, it's been three months since this candle. This is a weekly chart that was early August. And uh, we gapped up. We had a, some consolidation here and we gapped up, went out, peaked, pulled back, almost hit the bottom of uh, that candle there, came back, hit the bottom of the candle exactly there on that big red candle dip below but now we're back above it so this is what I was saying I focus a lot on especially for longer term analysis on these weekly charts uh, the fact that we went below it and we're back above it now and especially if we can close the week well above this level that would be quite bullish or fairly bullish I should say why because it would be a uh, bear trap you know those that were looking at this level saying oh, okay now we drop below the range they jump the gun it is not unusual on a weekly chart to to you know whether it's an uptrend line or a horizontal price support level to briefly go below and if you do it sucks in it shakes out a few more weak handed longs by weak handed longs i mean those that you know worry about it all the time and and we're going to sell anyways and you get them out and it gives you a stronger core holding if you get those those that didn't get shaken out on that if it, gold starts going up why would they sell then uh, they're the strong hands, so that's what gives you a better 
when you get those little false breakouts or false breakdowns and uh, and you also get the shorts that jump in and then they get squeezed out if it goes up so that's why uh, if we can start to rally here uh, there's a potential you know we can run back up to maybe above the top of the range way too early to say right now and there's 130 if we go much lower and uh, yeah, I don't see a lot of support uh, you know big red candle down through here is probably going to bring us back to that 130 would be my guess right now but there's here's the bull market trend line you know our uh, the bear market downtrend line the big triangle pattern remember on gold this was a triangle pattern even though we've been in a bull market it, it was struggling with this and this triangle broke out back tested and uh, this is what it looks like to me this is still my longer term outlook for gold this is where I see gold going at minimum before all is said and done in the in the bull market here and, and, and maybe more maybe beyond that so there's my there's the levels to watch longer term outlook we'll look at silver uh, silver kind of a similar pattern you had this downtrend line here on the weekly chart and uh, right here uh, goes back to uh, early 2016 Boom, very impulsive breakout. That was when I started to say silver appeared poised to play a game of catch up, and it certainly did. I said it would likely outperform gold, and it sure did on that run. And uh, no, like gold, it's corrected. It's going to trade, it's going to follow gold. Sometimes it'll lag. That's why I refer to playing a game of catch up. That can go be it to the upside or downside. But um, silver, from a technical perspective, has pulled back to this 1572 support. Again, um, you know, when you just take a step back, and try to assess the uh, trend you know you had a divergent low here which was bullish and that started this uh, you know bullish trend we're in and uh, if you're an Elliott waiver I'm, I'm it's not my forte I don't know if the, I, you guys can if you're a big EW person correct me if I'm wrong but this could be a, a wave uh, a five-way primary pattern wave one up wave two corrective wave wave C is always the most powerful the strongest wave that would be your C up or three up I'm sorry wave three uh, wave four with a wave five to come so maybe we'll see and maybe I you know some counts are validated that's a problem with that Elliott wave it's often subjective you know revised in hindsight and you know different wave counts but that's those are the simple ones of primary pri uh, primary you know five wave uh, primary trend things like that trend indicators okay it just got oversold you know got oversold back here corrected and it got oversold here so that's how it looks like uh, what it looks like on the longer term uh, where would it might be headed uh, I think uh, quite possibly up here at about 2383 up to about 2540 it's at 1570 now so you're talking a good you know 55 62 percent run rally potential in silver if uh, if the bullish case starts to firm up here but again you know it's it's dropped out silver has kind of dropped out below its trading range this is a daily chart here let me just get rid of all these lines for a second draw it out like this uh here we go so you know it's not super we had a, a blow off top the near parabolic run that's what we call a buying climax that huge surge in volume and uh and it's been moving lower since the trading range is very sloppy it's not very well defined you know you could say there and there but then you had this pop above pop below pop below now um, but i can say that there's some support here comes back to about right here you have a big old gap a couple reactions there and we're at support just like gold and uh, that support goes all the way back to about right here you had some support so there's silver turn my lines back on see what we have here Mm, potential trend line but there wasn't really much of a reaction there so that trend line's not very valid it's not a great looking chart I'm gonna say that now and again I can't we're not we're close to oversold but not deeply oversold we don't have a positive divergence on either the PPO or RSI so uh, I can't make a strong case to go long if you believe you're in a bull market you know scale in uh, with stops appropriate stops somewhat below but that's uh, how it looks on the daily chart let's look at the futures oh well let's look at the other ones I wanted to cover I am in fact I've spent the better part of today I've been MIA in the trading room because I've spent hours today working on and I actually composed a video which just I just uploaded on palladium because I, I think it, 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 what happened is I ran two, there were so many things I wanted to cover. I think it, it is setting up and it will be one of my, um, you know, my, well, I'll call my golden trades uh, when, the, when the next top in Palladium comes, the next bear trend, uh, and that'll probably coincide with a recession. 
I want to cut that video down. Uh, I want to streamline it a little bit and get it a, a little shorter in duration. Uh, it ran, I think, 45 minutes, so 42 minutes, something like that. And that's just that's just too long. But uh, there's a lot in there. If you guys want to see it before I do the other one, I'll post a link. Just shoot me something in the comment form. It's already uploaded to the site. I just, like I said, I might call through, cut it, cut it down a little bit, and redo that one. Um, but what I covered in there is uh, we had, I posted it as a trade setup recently. We have a nice price channel here. We broke down the other day. That was uh, on Monday. And then we back tested it and boom, pretty impulsive rejection. Uh, we are back testing now. So I can say this, it is an objective short entry here on this kickback to 161.26. Uh, there's a gap above your next resistance and a next objective short too. If it gets there, it'd be 163.65, give or take somewhere in that area with a stop somewhat above ideally. Uh, the trend has been resilient, but uh, what I had mentioned in that other video is, you know, typically corrections don't come in a one and done uh, you usually get at least an ABC move. Whether this today's kickback is a, even a, it's not even up enough to even be a B, I don't think. So, and the thing about palladium is usually when it breaks, it's been super, super resilient. Every little dip has been bought for a while, and that is because there has been a shortage of palladium. Again, I'm not going to go off tropic here. I'm going to do a whole separate video that has to do with, you know, the usage for um, catalytic converters and, uh, you know, emission controls and vehicles. Um, but uh, if you can see the nature of it, yes, the trend's resilient, resilient. Here's this almost identical, but bigger, larger price channel. When it broke down, boom, boom. And then again, it wasn't just a one and done. You had a very impulsive drop. Uh, I forget how much that was measured out. It was, well, I'll, I'll do that for you right now. Let me just tell you. From the highs, it dropped on the initial surge off the high about 18%. From the point it broke down, there was a breakdown. It gapped down below that channel. And it dropped in just two days about 13% or so. But again, it was not a one and done. It, like most corrective waves, you know, you have a you had a kickback rally and then another leg down before all is said and done and before the uh, resumption of the uptrend. So uh, that's most likely what we're going to get here. Um, it's not a hard entry. It's an objective entry, and I may add this one as an official short trade. I may do it soon. I'm just gonna get these videos out. If you like it, take it. I showed you where to, you know, contain your your uh, losses with some stops. You know, you can set them a little bit above, or you know, at most above that uh, candle. Yes, uh, Monday's candle right there, the big red candle. Targets uh, first stop should be that 15:35, but also align it with the Palladium futures chart. I'm gonna get to that in a second. But I I, I think uh, an uh, ideal target as well is this um these intersecting downtrend lines um but what i had talked about in that other video and again i'm going to get another one out there so you have intersecting you have an uptrend line a downtrend line um, and you also have some price resistance around there but what i talked about is just like the stock market and, and this is logical if you think about it we're in the stock market we're in, in by far we've long since been in the longest bull market ever in history longest economic expansion ever in history. We're, we're 11, what, 11 years now into that. And we all know that that's not going to last forever. Right now, you read the headlines, they're certainly telling you there's plenty of life left in the bull. That's what the recent shift has been just from a few weeks earlier. There's a lot of, you know, concern. So again, I'm, you know, that's, I'm not, I'm not, you know, buying into it. But again, I'm not fighting. I'm not shorting the market. I need those sell signals, but I'm certainly not buying into that. And I certainly don't like the fact everybody all of a sudden, it just fear has left the market. Fear has left the market. That's evidence in the VIX. It's evidence from what I'm hearing. You know, you know a lot of these, you know, fund managers and stuff uh, and get your clients in the market. You should be buying everything right now. Plenty of upside, perfect environment, feds, low rate, blah, 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 strong earnings. No risk. Trade war is only getting better. All right, let's let me get off the uh, fundamental stuff. Um, what I was getting at is, it is only logical that as every day goes by, each and every day passes, we are one day closer to the top in the market or play. Let's just talk. Focus again back to the precious metal, palladium. And again, you'll have to see the charts that I covered in that other video. I showed the pretty, pretty impressive charts, um, pretty clear trends. And I think that the point is it's going to be easy money, easier than the market 
trading and shorting in much higher profit potential to catch a trend in palladium, whether it's a bullish or bearish trend. They're very clear and distinct trends and they're very powerful and strong trends. And they're going to put, you know, you get on the right side of one of those trends, it'll put a lot more money in your pocket in the same period of time as it would if you put the same amount of money shorting or going long the S&P 500. That is a, just all but a guarantee. History will show. Again, I'll follow up on that chart. So now uh, that's that's what it looks like on the daily chart. I want to show you the weekly chart here. Um, you have this uptrend line right here. Strong uptrend and palladium is in an uptrend. It broke that uptrend. You know, had a decent correction along the way here, but we are back testing. If you zoom in, you see this trend line, which was broken and back tested here, was the catalyst for this correction. We came up, overshot it a bit, but we've since been back testing. There's a lot of momentum fueled overshoots because the trend has been so strong here, but it is respecting this trend line. It just rolled off it again. So uh, a lot of reactions along there. And of course, uh, you have now this trend line underneath right here with these reactions to watch. And when we break that, that would be a longer term sell signal. And I think it may be coming. All right now, everything again is rosy, hunky dory, extremely resilient trend in palladium for for years now, um, you know, with some corrections along the way, but we didn't have the technical posture we do now. Uh, prices are getting out of whack, and again, I'll speak to the fundamentals behind palladium as well as the technical case, but I'm just showing you right now the potential is big on this one, and so the way I'm viewing it as, um, like I said, every day we come one day closer to the top, whether that top in palladium is, was already, or it already took place, you know, on the recent highs or whether it's going to come three weeks from now or three months from now or longer, it will come. That's the nature of any security, especially commodities. They work in cycles and the trends are powerful. So from where we're at today, um, uh, you know, uh, sooner or later, I see this one coming back at least here at very minimum and quite likely down here. And, 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 and what I'll show you on the uh, longer term charts, quite possibly more, that's a 46% drop down to 85 on PALL, the ETF. So there it is. There's your levels. That will help uh, sharply increase the odds if you see a solid weekly uh, candlestick close or a big intraweek move down below that trend line right there. You want to watch. And again, you can see a smaller trend lines when you zoom in on the on the daily chart. Uh, and I think I even showed you on the 60 minute chart. Yeah, I did. We broke this trend line on the 60 minute chart. That was a sell signal. And uh, so you can see, you know, we have resistance overhead. And so this appears to me to be uh, we're in a correction in palladium that I believe has more to go. So uh, how you want to trade, it's up to you. There's some near term targets for PALL. Now let's roll into futures and we'll wrap this up. Uh, since I'm on palladium, we'll kind of go backwards here. Um, I'll start with, it'll go to palladium. This is a uh, daily chart, two year daily candles. And you can see these trend lines, palladium futures, symbol PA. Uh, there is a, a micro contract that trades one tenth side. These are big, these contracts, each contract's going to represent a almost $167,000 net exposure to palladium. So if that's not your cup of tea, you know, you go up at 1%, you've made, you know, 16, 1700 if you're long or, you know, if it drops that much, you made it if you're short, but it cuts both ways. If that is too much for you, but you still, you like futures, you experience, you know what, how they work. Uh, PAM is the uh, micro contract for palladium and it's one tenth of the size, trades off the same price levels. So uh, you can use these charts. If you're not familiar with it, stay away, read up, learn all you can about futures. Um, and um, you can Google micro palladium futures and you'll get the deep contract specs on that. Uh, for some reason, I, I enter the symbol and it doesn't show up in, in interactive brokers. I've been short, you know, trading PA, but uh, it'd be nice to want to, you know, want to reduce down, have a real light position or layer in to use that PAM. So I'll, I'll have to give interactive brokers a call and see what the, what the deal is, why they don't why that symbol doesn't show up in my trader workstation. But there's there's your trend lines right there. This one was broken on the daily chart. Pulse of selling so far. That's a sell signal. I don't see on this daily chart, I don't see any support until at least right here, this first support zone you can see there. Pretty decent. And uh, I'll give you those levels in a second. And uh, a second support level there, about 1563. That first support zone comes in at... Uh, 1602 to 1615 or so. And again, I don't see a whole lot of uh, support until there. 
and it'd be rare to see a correction end without tag. And there's some minor, right where I have the crosshairs, so right about where we are, 166250 or so, there is minor, and that's right here on top of these candles, so it's possible. But again, I favor move down to at least the top of that zone and that trend line as well. Usually you get that close. We haven't visited that trend line in a while, so that's, uh, I see a little more downside in PA possibly there. Now, the important thing is, because there is a lot of evidence I showed you on the weekly chart, the big divergences, um, you have daily negative divergences here on the daily chart and let's just go back real quick and, sh and and highlight the last time we had we had negative divergence here uh, it should be an arrow tool negative divergence here that was a divergent high clean trend line break that was our correction our first wave and it didn't end until we got right there we had a trend line here ended right there divergent high so your negative divergence down here on the indicators we had this drop it didn't start out very strong but finally boom and it didn't end to hit this trend line now we have, uh, you can see, divergent high again, and so far we're down. We haven't even come close to what these previous two corrections have done, so keep that in mind. And also remember, uh, go out to the uh, weekly chart like I just did on, um, I did it on uh, uh, PALL, the ETF. Okay, for some reason that weekly chart's taken forever to load on interactive brokers. Here's a weekly chart of Palladium Futures right here. And uh, so what stands out, uh, you can see right here, there's your, uh, probably hard to see this color right now, uh, positive or negative, negative divergence right here on the weekly chart. You can screenshot this, go back, you can see all the other divergent highs, negative divergence right there. There's your wedge pattern right here, working its way up. There's the back test of that trend line I showed you a minute ago on PALL. So boom, these dotted lines are, are, are my targets, my longer term targets. That's a big drop down to 1100 and uh, quite possibly more. Uh, when the top finally comes. And again, that would be a minimum swing target down there to 1100. So you can do the math on that. We're at 1656 or so now. That's a, that's a pretty decent drop right there. And of course, you need to break that trend line. You know, we're in an uptrend. We could bounce off it. So that would be a, a sell signal on the weekly chart right there. There it is. Interactive brokers finally loaded. There's a break of this, this trend line here on the weekly chart right there. Big red candle through there. And uh, you know, really support around here about 15. No, let's go by that other chart, but I'd say, yeah, around 1571 or so. So, and look, big, big negative divergence, too. So, um, this again is going to be one of my my favorite uh trades to you know that I, I may hold on to this one and extend it. Um, maybe take a core position, hold on to that, unless the charts are screaming bear market rally. If we get additional evidence. Uh, that the top may be in. What would that evidence be? The evidence is when the buyers, if and when they don't step in where they should step in. Um, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this one just because it's one of my favorites, but uh, this is back to the Palladium weekly or daily. I'm 60, 60 minute chart, sir. Sorry, guys. 60 minute chart. There was a very nice support shelf right there. A decent, I should say, a decent, not, not super. Nice. And, uh, you know, that price action recently, I think I started with the chart, broke down, back test that minor trend line, broke the secondary trend line, back tested, impulsive leg down, set up a beautiful bear flag bear flag played out it took us down below support and we may be setting up in a larger flag now which would project all the way down here but I have the next support and it's a good support look at all these reactions right here that supports at 1614 1615 we'll call it so what am I talking about where the buyer should step in right here if if Palladium is still in a bull trend and the and supply dynamics are still very favorable for prices, meaning there's a lot more demand than uh, there is supply right now. This is where the buyer should step in and buy. This is where I would buy if I thought Palladium was going. If it didn't have all these divergences, if I didn't think it had the potential for a 50 to 70% drop, which I do, and I made the case in that other video, I'll do it again, uh, and easily, I'll just go, I'll just show you a long-term chart going back decades, and I'll show you the trends. Uh, you can pull that yourself if you want to now, just Google search, you know, uh, microtrends.net has some good charts for Palladium. Um, but that's it. So what happens if we hit 16.15 and they slice through it like it's not even there or we get a little reaction, you know, buyers step in as they should, but then we turn around and, and, and break on through there and keep going, then that is a pretty bearish sign. It might tell you, hey, something's wrong here. The trend may have changed now. You have more sellers. The longs want out. 
uh, and uh, there's a lot of sellers stepping in. There's not enough buyers stepping in, buying where they should be. And then, of course, you have the next target. So these are things I look for, and I can't tell you right now uh, where it stops, but I can tell you how I plan to trade it, and that is give it a little room past those levels. If I you know, continue to be profitable in this trade, I'll just have wide stops where I'll guarantee at least a, you know, at this point a break even or you know, guarantee profits and, and, and see if this can morph into something more. In other words, instead of trying to hit a, uh, instead of trying to hit a single or a uh, double or even a triple on this trade, hold out for the home run. All right, so that's that's the potential is there right now. Uh, it would certainly, certainly help the case to see the stock market roll over because when I go over, when I do the separate video on Palladium, when I uh, redo it, uh, I'm going to show you long-term charts and the those big 50, average 50 plus, over 50% drops in, in each bear market and they're quick. They're over anywhere from six, eight months to just about two, two and a half years. And um, they almost always coincide with recessions. Uh, and so therefore they're going to coincide with bear markets and the stock market because this is, although it is a precious metal, it has more industrial applica applications than uh, jewelry. You know, precious metal because it's rare. Um, but again, this is uh, used in emissions for cars primarily um, so that's it uh, what did I not cover did I not cover PPLT I don't think I did uh, PPLT oh yeah the futures charts that's what I wanted to cover there's there's platinum related metal palladium is in a platinum the group of platinum metals but it's it's not the same as platinum but it's in that same group and uh, there it is coming close to back testing this big triangle pattern uh, but let me get to the futures and we'll wrap it up here this video has gone on long enough uh, silver okay silver is that support this is a daily chart to your daily you can see candles pretty decent support on silver futures right here remember I already covered SIL reactions reaction reaction reactions reactions there and there it is so that's about 16 six we'll call it 1661 on silver futures kind of got of ahead of itself but uh, you know the charts have been pretty constructive and you can see you know these are your buy points that's why I don't have a, a hard buy I would love to see right now uh, if I did it would make a stronger case positive divergence on the indicators you know things like this but it would look something like this prices are making a lower lower low and if these indicators were making higher lows like they were back here I'd have a lot more confidence to uh, go long at this support level or if I had a nice clean trend line in which to trigger break I don't have either I all I have now is oversold at support it might be enough in a bull market that's w sometimes all you get you don't have to have divergences are a big part of my trading but they are not the be all end all I do it's not as if I won't go long or short a stock if I don't have positive or negative divergence it just helps to confirm the trade and give me more confidence on on where that trades headed so there it is on a daily chart let me show you what the uh, 60 minute chart looks like uh, SI positive divergence continues to build as I showed you where it's support there's a potential trend line it's not super well defined but there's one to watch you know remember the metals have been in a big sloppy three month sideways trading range but there it is so you want to step in now you know we could continue lower and maybe we do and we continue to build these divergences uh, or you know there's divergence right now at this point so uh, you know maybe we do pop and I think it's going to be related to that chart I, the chart I started out with on NQ if we break down and get a, at least a near-term sell signal you get a near-term pop you could trade the metals silver probably come back up here to that 17 17 325 404 level at least I, I think from what I'm looking at here on the charts again if we get uh, all, all that uh, sell signals in the market and or sometimes you get a buy signal on the metals and, and they're going up with the stock market too so they, it's not that you have to have the stock market break down it just would certainly help jumping over to gold to your daily chart uh, we're you know it's not a super well-defined support there was a pretty decent support and we're below it now 1466.85 these are gold futures GC we still have the potential divergence on the RSI not the PPO and um, Pretty good support down here. If gold continues lower, 1427, you can see not so much through here, but there was a cluster of reactions around that point, some levels here. And then uh, if that doesn't hold, you know, we go lower. Let's look at the 60 minute chart, try to see if there's anything that stands out there. 
and it's a lot like silver. You know, those two usually often look the same or very similar on the 60-minute charts. Positive divergence right there, been building. That's what I like to see. We haven't seen that in a while. And, uh, you know, we had a divergent low back here. Uh, divergence only on the RSI here, but it was enough to launch that big rally right here. A divergence at this point launched it that rally right there actually and we held that level and it really continued up to right here before it uh, broke below where we put in that divergent low so there it is positive divergence for the first time in a while and a, a similar downtrend line that we have on silver to help trigger you know a uh, timing on a buy entry if you want to trade up and again we're in a big sloppy range I can't tell you but exactly where it's going to go if it breaks out but I'd say about 14 1480 a minimum minimum target and one way to do it too is um, you know if you get, you get a decent entry on gold and it's running up, you can just set your stops at break even or gradually trail it up because you could break on through there. There's nothing to say we can't move up to the top and even beyond the trading range. I just don't can't make a strong case for it right now. I can't make a strong case for anything much more than a bounce, nor do I care to short it. So that's why I'm talking about these bullish setups. I just don't care to short gold here because it's in a bull market and uh, until proven otherwise. All right, I'm gonna, we'll wrap it up here. I covered uh, enough on these, and uh, the stock market's still holding that support. I started it out. We were at that uh, uh, trend line on NQ, and we're still there. We successfully defended it so far. So same old, same old. Don't get excited until you see some, some pretty convincing sell signals in the broad market. But don't fall asleep at the wheel. Uh, because we're at that level with the VIX and low volume and everything else, and these you know divergences continue to build, that uh, could be a pretty good one if we get it. So just stay tuned. All right, we'll wrap it up here, and I will work to either get that same video on Palladium out that I did earlier, or if I can, I'm going to take a look at it and see what what I can cut out to maybe shorten it. And until then, if I don't post an update on it, just let me know, and I'll post a link if you want to watch it. It's like got 40 something minutes. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.